Hi everyone. Today it's time to complete the accounting cycle. So what we are going to be looking at with this completion is uh, all of these different steps that we have out there. So the first step that we talked about was how we analyze all of our transactions. The second step in the process is journalizing those regular journal entries, posting those regular journal entries, and then preparing that trial balance. The next set of items we have is to journalize our adjusting entries, to post our adjusting entries, and then to prepare our adjusted trial balance. Now from the adjusted trial balance, we can complete the accounting cycle because we can prepare financial statements, we can journalize our closing entries, then we post our closing entries, and we can prepare our post-closing trial balance. So that completes all of the steps as far as the accounting cycle is concerned. Now there are different types of accounts that we have to look at when we look at these different things like closing entries. And so the types of accounts we have, we have permanent accounts and we have temporary accounts. So with the permanent accounts, what we look at are these are accounts that report on activities that are related to one or more future periods. They do not close and they do include all of our balance sheet accounts. So our assets, our liabilities, and our capital. Then we look at temporary accounts. Temporary accounts are accounts related to only one accounting period. So it's going to include all of our income statement accounts as well as the drawing account. And it will also include a new account that we're going to use with closing entries called income summary. All of these accounts must close. Now, what does that mean? What it means is that all of the balances in our temporary accounts need to go to zero at the end of the period so that we can start the new period with fresh balances. Because we don't want to carry over our income from last year into this year we want to know what we make this particular year. So that's why we would do those closing entries. So when we look at closing entries, all temporary accounts must be closed. So those temporary accounts or revenue and expenses and our withdrawals must begin each period with a zero balance. The owner's capital needs to reflect any prior period revenues and expenses and withdrawals that happened. And the order that we close the accounts is what we call READ, or R-E-I-D. Now what R-E-I-D stands for is one, revenues is R, and revenues need to close to an account called income summary. E is for expenses. Expenses need to close to the income summary. I is for income summary. Income summary needs to close to our capital accounts and D is for drawing, and it needs to close to the capital account as well. So what we see here is revenues and expenses close to income summary, income summary gives us our net income, and then that's gonna flow over to our capital account. If you don't see the letter, it doesn't close. So what does that mean? Do you see a C and read? No, you don't. That means the capital account does not close. It just simply changes its amount. The only thing that's going to close are revenues, expenses, income summary, and drawing. That's it. So now looking at that post-closing trial balance. The post-closing trial balance is a list of permanent accounts and their balances after all closing entries have been posted. It is going to verify that our total debits equal our total credits. It is going to verify that all temporary accounts have a zero balance. Assets and liabilities should remain the same amount, same balances as what you had in your adjusted trial balance. The capital amount should change because you're going to have to reflect the closing entries that were made. All of your balance sheet accounts should be listed on your post-closing trial balance. So now we can take a look at our income statements. 
and um, all of this. So what we see for our income statement. The income statement is the first statement that is prepared. It is going to include revenues and expenses. It is what we call a for the period statement because you are looking at a period of time, not just one day, but a period of time. So you're looking at the month or you're looking at the quarter or maybe even the year. And so on the statement itself and its header, you're gonna see for the month ended or for the quarter ended or for the year ended. It corresponds to the R and E of the closing entries because you have revenue and you have expenses on the income statement. So if you look at compare, preparing the income statement while you're doing your closing entries, the R and E, what you have for income summary should equal your net income or your net loss. And the net income or net loss that you have is going to move forward to the statement of owner's equity, which is why it's so important to do the income statement first, because that final balance that you have on your income statement moves over to your statement of owner's equity. So now for the statement of owner's equity, it is the second statement that is prepared. It is also for a period of time. So in the header, it would be for the month ended, the quarter ended, or the year ended. It's going to begin with the starting capital balance for the period. So if you're a brand new company, your starting balance would be zero because you wouldn't have had anything in it. If you were an older company, you would go back and whatever the ending balance was last year is going to be your starting balance for this year. You're going to add any capital contributions that the owners have made. So any owner investment will be added on the statement of owner's equity. The statement of owner's equity does correspond to the I and D of closing entries because we have to close our net income or our net loss to our capital account. We also have to take out the drawing. So though the drawing would be subtracted from the capital in our statement of owner's equity. And the ending balance that we have on our, uh, is gonna move over to our balance sheet. So whatever the ending capital balance was, is gonna move to the balance sheet. And that takes us to the third statement. And that's gonna be our classified balance sheet. So the balance sheet is just a snapshot. It's one moment in time. It is just going to have a date in the header. It is not a for the period. It's for right this minute um, because my cash could change in just a few minutes, you know, if I write another check. So it's just a one moment in time. It is the basic accounting equation. You're going to have assets on one side and you're going to have liabilities and equity on the other side. So it can be prepared where you have two sides or it can be prepared where assets are on top and liabilities and equity is on bottom. When we look at the classified balance sheet, we do have different categories we have to look at. So our asset categories are going to include the current assets, investments, fixed assets, and intangibles. So current assets are going to either be turned into cash or going to be used within one year. They do have to be listed in order of liquidity, which means how fast are they going to be cash? So what we see here is cash, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid rent, prepaid insurance. Those types of items are part of current assets. You then have an investment section, which we're not going to look at too much. This is just if we've invested in um, companies, stocks or bonds or anything like that. Um, if we have assets that we are not using in production, um, our, you know, for our business, it would go in the investment section. Fixed assets are items that will last more than one accounting cycle. These are things like buildings, equipment, furniture, and fixtures. And then we have our intangible items. Um, for fixed assets, you also will have accumulated depreciation will be subtracted out there. Uh, intangibles are things like copyrights, goodwill, um, patents, things like that, and they would have their own section as well. The next section is the liability section, not as complicated. There's only two parts for it, and that's the current liabilities and your long-term liabilities. So current liabilities are going to be paid within one year. So what we see here is we see accounts payable. We see a note payable that's one year or less. 
wages payable, interest payable, any of those items that you know are going to be paid within one year would go under current liabilities. For long-term liabilities, these are things that are going to be more than one year. Um, so if you have a note payable that's more than a year, say your auto note is five years, it's going to be a long-term liability. Um, mortgage payable, it's generally for 15 to 30 years, so that's a long-term liability. A bond payable would also be a long-term liability. Um, one thing I do want to caution about is with the long-term liabilities or certain portions of those that will be paid within one year. So if you have a mortgage, you know, part of that mortgage is going to be paid off within the next year. And so um, you do have a, uh, in the current liability section, there is a current portion of long-term liabilities in there as well with um, things that are going to be paid off and that's to help us with any of our ratios that we're doing we need to make sure that those things are split accordingly the last thing um, that we look at on the classified balance sheet is actually the equity part of the balance sheet and that's going to be our capital account this amount is going to come from the ending balance on the statement of owner's equity so just make sure you are pulling that balance from the statement of owner's equity. It's not coming from the trial balance. Everything else you're looking at is coming from the adjusted trial balance on the classified balance sheet, but the equity portion is actually going to be coming from the statement of owner's equity. Um, the other thing to remember here is that our total assets should equal our liabilities and our owner's equity. If it doesn't, that means we've messed up somewhere and we need to go back and look at it. And then our balance sheet also should match up to what is on that post-closing trial balance as well. Um, so hopefully this just kind of gives you a little bit of an overview of what we will be covering as far as closing out this accounting cycle.